Yeah, thank you very much, Thomas, for this nice introduction. And um, <laughs> also, of course, for the perfect presentation that you already gave during the tour on this Rhizotron system. And yeah, it's my pleasure to introduce you today to our controlled environment root and shoot phenotyping using the Rhizotron system in our phenosphere. So up to now, um, or let's say in history, root phenotyping was of course, as most of you know, done by chauvelomics, drawings, and the most of phenotyping was actually done above ground. And lately with increase of higher potential of technique, we are now able also to investigate the roots and in the last years, this was possible by using artificial media. I also talked to some of you today um, who are already doing this or actually doing this with uh, agaros or also using hydroponic cultures. And lately, um, this improved by using real soil and investigating the root growth by detecting the roots in soil. And therefore we are using the Rhizotron system. And as Thomas also explained in the uh, tour that we had today, our Rhizotron system is mainly based on the prototype that was developed in the Forschungszentrum Ulic, which was called Grow Screen 1 and 3. And we also made here at the site of the IPK our own experiences with the LTA and LTC system which um, has been also already introduced by Kerstin Neumann this morning, or, yeah, early afternoon. And um, yeah, let me just rec recapitulate this, what you see in, in, in top, you see um, here the LTA system, the carrier-based system, and here below you see our riso boxes um, for the LTC system. And um, yeah, our new developed system um, for high throughput root analysis will provide information about the quantitative traits of root growth in a time resolved manner, which is also evaluated automatically. With our, let's say, latest or in general first project here, which I would also like to present you later on, we aim to generate not only a root diversity atlas, or not only a general root atlas, but rather really root diversity atlas. So including of information over time, which will also allow the comparison between species, but also among lines and also individual plants. And what is also very important to document and illustrate data, the data that are generated can be used for graphical illustration directly on the root growth, and then in particular for the selected species. So you have seen our phenosphere. And um, this here on top is compartment three and four, which you also have seen, which can be separated. And here in the front, where we were mainly standing, um, this is our preparation room, so to say where also the rhizotrons are prepared and filled. And um, then after transferring them into the compartment three and four, so in our rhizotron system, um, we will be able to plant directly the plants onto the system. Um, as I said before, so our rhizotron system that I'm going to explain to you is based on the growth screen three prototype, which was built in, at the Forschungszentrum Jülich. And there are slightly differences. So we have here a sensor to plant technology. So this means our phenotyping towers are moving towards the rhizotrons, which are situated in these, oops. So here, which are situated in the trays, which contain five rhizotrons each. Um, in total, we are able to phenotype 360 rhizotrons. So this is not 360 degree phenotyping, but rather 360 um, rhizotrons in the entire system, which can be separated into these two compartments. So 180 per compartment. 
And in these two double rows, the imaging towers will automatically um, screen each line containing 90 of these um, rhizotrons. So our rhizotron system has a diameter of 90 to 60 centimeters and four centimeters thickness of the soil compartment. And it's, um, or it will finally give the detection of the root system or reveal the root system architecture and also reveal the root systems dynamics. Here you see the picture, what you already have seen in reality of the um, two phenotyping towers. Here you see the trays, which fits uh, five rhizotrons each, each. And we have this also in a controlled environment as Mark was um, presenting before. And now, since our latest um, approaches, um, we are also able to analyze transgenic plants. So this means um, we have get the um, opportunity or we have the ability, we, we are allowed to, to um, run this now under S1 safety conditions. Just to give you an impression, here I would like to show you a short video of the root growth on potato. And you can nicely see, so these are daily pictures taken and you can nicely see how the potato root is growing through the soil through this entire rhizotron and how fast this finally goes. And after approximately six weeks, this entire rhizotron is covered. And in particular, what is also very interesting, you see the direct development here on top, the, the stolons are developing and you even can see um, the development of the tubers or the, on, the onset of, of the tuber development. Good. Um, yeah, so this means you can not only detect the growth dynamics, you can even see different tissues, growth rate, changes in the dimensions. And if you add more than one plant, what we're actually currently doing in our S1 experiment, you can even investigate subsoil plant interaction. So when I speak of controlled environment, Mark was perfectly explaining that already for the other compartment. So we can control the light. We photosynthetic, photos, photosynthetically active radiation. So from zero to 500 micromole per square meter. We have a temperature range from 15 to 13 degrees, humidity 50 to 80%. CO2 can also be modulated. So from uh, 40 to 80, from 400 to 1,200 parts per million. We have an automated watering by an irrigation ridge. We can also detect the way of the rhizotrons. And what is also planned for future, we have the ability to heat and cool the rhizotrons. So we're able to set the soil temperature in order to detect the root growth. Here I have a short video to show you how the irrigation is performed. So the um, rhizotrons are directly watered inside the um, towers. Water is applied, photos are taken. And um, what is important really is um, for this detection of the roots, finally a uniform soil texture, texture the um, watering conditions, and we can thereby also apply drought and water stress. This is just as, um, and as also the, the question came up before how the rhizotrons are prepared and how this is possible to, to generate uniform rhizotrons. Here you see actually um, the stands that we used for filling these rhizotrons. So we have windows with particular marks and we are filling always particular amount of soil, trying to condense it in a really yeah, soft manner, not to compact the soil too strongly so that, that we have finally a really homogeneous filling of these rhizotrons. And um, 
yeah, whoops. And after that, they are brought into these trays where here you can also see the options to um, modulate the temperature. In general, we use 20 kilograms of substrate. We use pot ground soil to um, achieve the maximum of uh, contrast to, to really be able to detect the roots and separate them from the background. And we use an inclination angle of uh, 48, uh, 43 um, degrees to get the maximum visibility of roots. So referring to also experiments which have been done in Ulic before. Data acquisition is done from two image, uh, from two cameras, from top and side view. Therefore, we are using RGB uh, cameras, and we are also using for the root imaging the monochrome imaging. What you can see here, so where the roots are finally detected here from this lower part within the um, imaging tower. So, and this of course also gives the opportunity to detect the plant grows above soil, but also below ground. Yeah, these are here examples also from our rhizotron validation experiments. Here, these plants have been grown six weeks on our rhizotron system. And here, this is just to give you an idea how the root system looks like for all these individual plants. So this is, for example, sunflower here on the left, then we have the potato root, and the plant, the pea, then we have sugar beet, also giving a really nice um, yeah, root picture, so to say. We have the maize and also the pole bean as example. So I would just like to give you our scheme, how we proceed in analyzing our rhizotron experiments. So after the acquisition of the data, which is approximately 4.6 gigabyte in size per day, root pictures. Um, we are using the Saria software, also for generation of ground truth data. This is also required to be able to detect artifacts, to exclude artifacts from this root system. Um, we have then further to define our region of interest Therefore, we are using our self-developed uh, region of interest software tool. And finally, we went to the fully, fully automated root image analysis, so-called FARIA. And then we are finally able to evaluate our results. And if required, we can also go back and generate more ground truth data to optimize the entire system. And this is actually where we are currently. Um, here, I would like to give you an idea how the ROI region of interest software tool looks like. So we have finally to define oops, sorry, which region has to be um, analyzed. We also have to exclude the screws that Thomas told you before in the tour, which are required for the stability of the rhizotrons have to be excluded. And all this kind of analysis has to be done for all these 360 rhizotrons for one selected time point where all the rhizotrons are also sampled. Um, yeah, this software was analyzed by, or uh, was in, developed by Navendra Narisretti and Yevgeny Gliadilin, also from IPK, our image analysis group. Um, as I mentioned before, the ground truth data that is required for the artificial intelligence that is used later on in the FARIA system. Um, so the ground truth data will be generated after the automated imaging um, using the SARIA tool, which is um, represented here, which was also published already, and which is able to detect all the routes based um, on the data that is available. So this is software with a graphical user interface. And um, yeah, so we have then now um, also applied our FARIA system. So the fully automated root image analysis software. And this gives you here an example, 
how far the detection is able or capable of really detecting roots and separating it from the background. Here on the left side, you see the raw data. On the right side, the detected roots. The analysis is based on a set of ground truth images and is using um, a convolutional neural network. However, it's, I have to admit, it's still difficult to really detect very tiny root structures, such as root hairs or lateral roots. So, so very tiny lateral roots. Um, finally, the data analysis results in our output traits. And we have on the one side, so in total up to now, we are yeah, getting 56 independent traits. Um, we have some of them, which are, I would call them immediate pixel derived traits or features, which are finally area, root system lengths, root system width, branching points. And all of these are finally really related to the pixels detected in the uh, picture. And then we have also some of, I would call them derived or calculated features with um, seat angle, um, convex hull, and uh, things like that. All of them, as I said, also programmed here at IPK by the research group image analysis. Um, we used this system already to perform our Rhizotron validation and demonstration experiment with in total 17 species, 72 genotypes, types five replicates, so that all the 360 rhizotrons which were available were filled. And um, this is just to give you a short overview how this in total looked like. So all these plants which have been selected um, were sampled in total for 53 days, which, which resulted in a total of 19,000 pictures. So we have chosen the most important um, crops for the IPK and I think also in general. So seven monocot, 10 um, dicots. I have listed them here. I don't want to go through them in detail now. Um, and we choose um, seven species with six genotypes, 10 species with three genotypes, and in total, for all these individual, we choose five replicates, which is actually the minimum to get really substantial information about um, the general root growth of a species. So the idea is here also to do the image analysis at different stages, different to detect different root structures, and also get an idea about intraspecific variation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm faster now. And um, also the intraspecific variation as shown here for as example on the sunflowers. Um, here I have another example. I will just go through them now a bit quicker. So this is just an example on five replicates which have been analyzed um, for barley, cultivar morex, which shows very nicely how similar the, the, the root grows among the, the individual plants is, but however, there are still also some plants always which are, let's call them outliers. Currently, um, and this is the experiment which you also have seen right now on the tour. We are growing barley on, these, uh, on the rhizotron system. And the idea here is also to detect the aerial and the aerial and the root grows in, in um, Simultaneously, also to measure the di diurnal growth, um, we will have the automatic detection of lateral roots. We'll analyze the plant interaction. So we are using here and, and for this approach now, um, barley plants which have been modulated for the plant hormone strigolactone biosynthesis to get an idea about the interaction if this um, plant hormone, this, this root hormone, which is um, restricting the lateral growth of roots and also tillers in Bali um, is knocked out. And therefore, um, yeah, we set up the system and use it now um, for the investigation also for, made it available for GMOs. With this, I'm through. 
And I also would like to thank, of course, Thomas and all the participating um, scientists, former scientists, which have been also been here to set up the system. I came now later to this project and I'm allowed to, to present this to you now. But there are, of course, many people who were involved in setting up, developing this entire system um, from the group heterosis, ADP group, formerly now APP group, um, also the image analysis group, and also the bioinformatic group. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. All right, thank you very much, Markus. There is already a question in the chat. One I tried to answer, that is the distance between the rhizotrons. It's about 10 centimeter, if I um, am correct. Mm -hmm. The second question is by Rick. Uh, what is the pixel to millimeter resolution of the system? I think we have a 10 megapixel camera and the 60 by 90 centimeters should be 540,000 square millimeters. So it's um, 10 million pixels for 540,000 square millimeters. But we can do the maths later on. Okay, um, so there is a, another question in the chat. Pedro Rivera, can you take roots weight by removing the soil particles without breaking the roots? Short answer, no. It's very difficult. So we are going to set up a root washing system, but it's very difficult. Um, yeah, we tried to do that, but without breaking it. The answer is you can collect um, yeah. more or less the entire roots, but um, yeah. they will not be yeah. attached to each other fully. So there is, um, yeah. yeah, without, without breaking pieces of roots that you still need to um, measure. I think without breaking, it's not possible. But yeah. honestly, I don't know any method except hydroponics where it would be possible to get the entire root without destruction. Aeroponics. Yeah. Okay, other, other questions, further questions? This is a question I also discussed with my colleagues in Jullich. Um, there is a system uh, in Australia where people use these, these pin boards and grow the plants. And at the end of the growing season, they remove the soil and they hope that with the pins, the, the roots stick more or less and they have a root distribution as it is at, at the end of the growing season. Uh, so what do you think in the questions that you ask for yourself is it when is it really fruitful to use this system where you know exactly what the time development of the roots is over a system where you only would see at the end that some genotypes have a deep root system and others have maybe a shallow root system yeah so for the different species what we saw the root development is very diverse some are shallow, as you said, some are going very steep, very early steep. Um, it's very difficult to answer. I, I, I think this has to be seen and, and analyzed from case to case. Also concerning changes in the environment, if one would also go finally for that, because this will also influence the root structure, architecture, but Finally, this has to be addressed. Want to ask you a question yourself? No? Okay. <laughs> um, do you have inserts in the site to inject, for instance, salt or nutrients locally? No, not at the moment, but we could try to, to um, develop that. However, there is an experiment with different layers of soil with different composition. Um, like different um, nitrogen um, contents exactly. yeah. that's being analyzed right now. That's possible to give, uh, to, yeah, and put different layers. Um, there is a question. Benjamin? Do you see any features in your image which have something to do with soil moisture? So 
if the more moist the soil is, do you see any difference in your image? Yes. And can you use that to your advantage uh, in terms of looking at soil moisture distribution across your rhizotron? The advantage. So you could look at where water uptake is occurring over a rhizotron by looking at an image feature, for example. So we are just setting up the system. So therefore we were really happy to get a very uniform um, also um, very uniform separation of the water inside the rhizotrons. Um, because if you have these changes, which are definitely detectable, they will also interfere with the detection of the roots, partially. For that, we should have near infrared imaging um, to detect the, the water content independently from the imaging of the roots. But that is not yet available there. That's not implemented. And I'm honestly not quite sure how transparent the plastic glass is for the near infrared. So that has to be checked. Hey, there is another uh, question in the chat. What's currently the biggest challenge that you still have in your system? In the system or in the analysis? So in the system, the system runs quite well, I would say. Um, so I would say up to now, we are still struggling a little bit with the, yeah, calculation, detection of traits. And as I said, very thin routes are difficult to detect. So this is of course still on the point which has to be addressed. Also, the stabilization of the plants, if they grow bigger, yeah. that's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, there is one more question. Hello, just a quick question. For how long uh, are the plants in the rhizotron? So we did that in, in this one experiment for 53 days. Um, Right now, so you mean the one that, that you have seen today? Yes, or in general. So they were, they were there for uh, three weeks. Okay. Well, general four to six weeks should be possible depending on the size of the plants. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 